Hey guys, what's going on? So this is probably going to be a uh, pretty quick video. Um, not really a whole lot to really do in this one. Um, I'm at a point now where I've just got a bunch of small stuff to do that's not really related to doing the E153 swap. So yeah, I'll probably film it, but it won't necessarily... I'll probably film it, but it won't necessarily be part of this series, you know? So... Anyways, here's where I'm at. So the mock-up engine transmission has been removed from the engine bay. It's sitting here. What I need to do is cut the notch for... I don't know why the focus is so fucking... So I need to cut the notch for the uh, for the starter here. So uh, I'll film that. And... I've got to clean the engine bay up. Probably not going to film that. That will probably be... I mean, I may film it, but it won't be part of the E153 series of videos. Um, I still need to finish the wiring harness, both inside and outside. I'll probably film some of that, but not in this video. Uh, got all the motor mounts done and cleaned up. Um... I went ahead and sandblasted them, and I kind of liked the way they looked when they were sandblasted, so I just went ahead and I painted them with a matte clear. So I think they, you know, got mosquitoes. See, I think they came out pretty good. Had to grind some material off of the weld there so that the nut would sit flush, but uh, but yeah, I think they look kind of look pretty good in just the the raw color with the after being media blasted with the matte clear. So went with that. So those are done. Didn't do all of them. I painted that one black just because I had already painted it and I didn't feel like didn't feel like sandblasting it. So so have lots of work to do inside the car probably won't film all that stuff so so anyways uh, I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to separate this block from this transmission and start clearancing the transmission for the starter and by clearance I mean cut a big ass hole in the bell housing So basically you've got to cut a notch in here to allow the starter to go in. So I don't really know the best way to to start other than to just start cutting. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut a really small notch to start with and see what I end up with. So you can kind of see where I've marked where the hole is supposed to be. And I'm just going to eyeball it, you know, as best I can do.
So I do have to drill out this hole in the back of the starter here. So the threads. Normally, uh, the way this attaches is a uh, there's a bolt that comes through the back of the Mazda BP block and then catches this part, this nodule of the starter. And it catches this part of the starter. Um, but in this case, they went ahead and the plate's threaded. So you don't have to cut this, uh, this entire block off on the back of here to get to that bolt. So, I guess I'll go ahead and drill that real quick. Make sure I drill the right one. make a mental note of that. Alright, so now that that's practically settled, I mean obviously I still need to, um, obviously I still, there we go, hey. Alright, so now that that's uh, basically settled, there we go. Alright, so now that that's basically settled, um, I can go ahead and move on to the next part, which is installing the LSD not necessary um obviously uh stock diff's probably fine but um i went ahead and i got this m factory uh helical style lsd or torsion style lsd so uh, i'm going to install that i'm going to try and do it myself so the next step is going to be cleaning this transmission up and getting it disassembled I'm going to make some room on my temporary bench here so I can lay out all the parts. Um, yeah, so it's going to be fun. Alright, so I've got my fan on because it's really hot out here. Uh, hopefully you can hear me well. I'll probably switch to my lapel mic at some point. Um, so I'm not exactly sure all the parts that are necessary because are all the tools that are necessary. Uh, so I'm not sure of all the tools that are necessary, but... Um, so I've got uh, some various Allens, like Allen sockets and Torx sockets your standard, you know, uh, metric sockets, some wrenches, impacts, ratchets, all that fun stuff. I mean, as far as I know, basic tools are necessary. I know you will need, um, you can either get the specialty Toyota parts that are called out in the instructions on how to pull this apart. You can find that, like, online. I'll probably put a link if I remember. I might not. Anyways, uh, you know, you can find the stuff online, find a PDF on every step to pulling this thing apart, tells you everything you need. Um, you can forego the fancy Toyota tools that are called out, and you can use, um, like a bearing separator and a, uh, like a pulley puller in, in place of the fancy Toyota tools. Like I said, the instructions are pretty straightforward. Right, so basically the first few steps are just telling you to strip this guy down. Uh, so you're going to want to remove... Uh, 
Uh, you're gonna want to remove the the speed sensor, the reverse switch, uh, neutral switch, all that stuff. All your fancy switches and stuff. All that needs to be popped out of there. Find these tool trays are handy for uh, keeping parts. Yeah. So you're going to want to. Probably should have removed all the stuff to begin with. I'm just going to remove all the shift linkage stuff. Want to remove the speed sensor on the back here. That is a, it's a 12 millimeter. So right back here is the speed sensor that focuses. So it's either a sensor or manual um, or a mechanical driven deal. As I said, that is a 12 millimeter. It just comes. Surprise, there's actually oil in there. This comes right out. Remove this bracket here. So it's going to tell you to remove the shift. Shift cam or whatever you want to call it. So when you remove this guy, you want to make sure the trans is in neutral, otherwise this won't come out. So I guess. So make sure she's in neutral. Alright, I'm going to refer to my instructions again, because I don't remember if that's everything or not. Alright, uh, release, uh, remove, remove release fork and bearing, remove backup light switch, uh, where is that, that's, there we go, just big old honking guy right there. So right, right there is your... I believe that's the backup light switch. I could be wrong, it could be some other switch. Either way, it needs to come out. And that comes right out. Yeah, pretty sure it's the backup light switch. Just telling me to remove this cover here. These bolts are 12 millimeter. really nice I mean compared to the G series you know the G series this is just a stamped cover this is like solid and structural so all right let's see what's next all right so I apparently forgot a step well I didn't forget a step I, I omitted a step uh, I get my gloves
God, this thing weighs a fucking ton. There is no... That's weird. Did I download the right one? I think this might be different. Alright. This one doesn't have it. That's weird. Least bearing retainer. It's definitely not a part of this one. I guess some transmissions have a... Some type of retainer bolted on the inside of the bell housing. This one definitely does not. This is an older MR2 transmission, so that would make sense if this is for a Camry. So... It does say S51, so yeah, it is a different... Slightly different procedure, so we'll see. We'll see how this works. So, yeah, vehicle speed sensor is removed. Uh, that top one was the reverse switch. Uh, lock ball assembly. Two guys up top. All that stuff is out of there, so... This is good to go. I gotta start eating my Wheaties, man. This thing is a... This thing's a beast. Alright, so remove output shaft nut. So to get this guy off, what they want you to do is go in here, and there's... You can see the shift fork selectors inside this, this orifice here. And you want to push them all up, and what that will do, that will cause all the gears to mesh together. It will engage all the gears at the same time and we'll lock this so that you can take a breaker bar and pull that guy off. There we go. Jesus. That took some force. <laughs> so that should be... should have that locked. Anyways. Took that down too far. There we go. Back in neutral. Now it says to remove the hub sleeve and shift fork. Jeez. So it's got some gnarly Loctite in there. That's off and out of the way. The rest of the stuff gets pulled off. So, let me go find some tools and I'll be right back. So, before removing this, um, like I said, the instruction says to remove this guy first, but because of the type of puller I have, I have to remove this set first. Um, so, there's a C clip, very hefty looking C clip here. Hopefully, I should be able to pry off. Out too much. All right, so just about got that stupid fucking clip off. All right. So, like I said, this isn't the correct tool. This isn't the fancy Toyota. This isn't the Toyota recommended tool. But this should work. The bolts are uh, 8 by 1.25.
need to pay real close attention to how all this is put together. I'm hoping I can just remove it all in one piece. Oh, needle bearings. Fun. That's a really interesting bearing there. Two halves. I wonder why it's not just one piece. Alright. So now that I got that guy off. Just long enough. Alrighty. So yeah, with a little persuasion, you can get these out with the wrong tools. I would recommend just buying the right tools though. Factory bearing retention plate. Oh my god, why are there so many freaking bearings on this damn thing? So many C clips. The bane of my existence at this point. I guess I can try. Or I can order the right tool. Well, that one's not nearly as bad as the other ones. Okay. That one wasn't so bad. I'm assuming I need to take these guys off, too. I can't imagine getting very far if those still attached. Seriously. Tent in there. Get that out of there. Pretty sure there's a detent ball in there, but can't get that out. So, right here, there's a pin that needs to be removed. Take the case off now. Well, 
almost ready, other than these like 10 billion bolts here. Some on the inside. Alright. Now for the fun part of trying to separate these two halves. Silicone together. I'm going to fight with this for a while, and once I get it apart, I'll come back. Alright, so I was able to get it off by sticking a pry bar here and here. I was able to get it loose by sticking a pry bar here and here and just prying. And it finally came apart. It's a pain in the ass. It did not come apart easily. That is. It's getting really annoying. All right. So this is the guy I'm after. the oiling and tubes and. Jesus Christ, man. So if this was a G-Series at this point, uh, what would happen would be just lift the gear set out and take the diff out. But this isn't anywhere close to that. Oh, man, this is... It's going to be fun. Alright, so I'm just about to the point to where I'm ready to pull the gear sets out. Um, oh my god. Apparently the diff is the freaking uh, majority of the weight in this thing. That diff is... Jesus. Alright, so... I'm supposed to remove this guy. So those look like... 13s, maybe? They are 12s. They might be 10s. No, definitely 13s. Nope, 12s. So these two are 12 nulls. So I'm thinking maybe it's the detent ball that's getting stuck in here. It's both these guys. And the ball's definitely still in there. But this isn't good enough to fit. There we 
we go. Yeah, helps to remove the detent. If you don't remove the detent, I don't know where the focus is on that. No, it's way over, out here. But yeah, you gotta remove the little ball bearing. Oh God, and not lose the little ball bearing. There you go. So, let's remove the shift fork too. Which I think, yeah, the gear should be ready to come out. Big boy differential. Here she is, completely taken apart. Hopefully, I can get her back together. So, on to phase two. Actually, before we move on to other things, I thought I'd like to point out that uh, focus. Focus. We'll go back to manual focus then. I know. But yeah, this thing has a uh, has an oil pump in it. Yeah, most transmissions they just uh, rely on the uh, the viscosity of the of the oil. You know, to lube the whole thing. You just you know the bottom of the gear is sitting in the oil, and then the oil just gets splashed up and carried everywhere else. Whereas this actually has a pump. Has tubing, pumps the oil, transmission oil, everywhere it needs to be. There's even a tube here that goes to what would be the uh, the center differential, or the uh, the rear diff, I guess you know, whatever you want to call it. You know, the part of the uh, if this was an all-wheel drive transmission, there'd be a pumpkin hanging off of this the side here. So there's actually a tube there to send oil to the to that guy. Crazy man, that is absolutely nuts. <laughs> Alright, so I need some parts off of this to transfer over to my um, M Factory LSD. I don't, you know, this is a weird looking. They're saying this is an open diff, but man, it really looks like some type of weird limited slip or something. Okay, yeah, no, it's, a, it's an open diff. Weird. So, alright. I gotta break all these loose because I need the, uh, this ring, and then I also need the speed ring, so I'm gonna have to pull this thing completely apart. And I'm gonna do that with copious ugga duggas. The first thing I'm gonna do is take this, this outer ring off pinion ring or whatever you want to call it. Alrighty. Next thing, I need to get this guy off so I got to pull all these bolts out as well. How do I pull this apart? I 
it's just like that. And it is a fancy open differential. I really could have swore that, that was a uh, that was like some type of LSD or something. Nope. Just plain old open diff. See, but look at that. That's brilliant, though. It's an open diff, but you never have to worry about the uh, the gears falling apart. You know, in the um, the Mazda G series, these are truly just floating. And if you jar the transmission enough, these gears will fall out of alignment, and you got to pull the transmission apart and put all this crap back together. Whereas this is uh, yeah, it's brilliant it's genius well, it's not genius but that's just the way things should be done you know so there's that I don't know if I put that back together the right way don't really care because I'm not using that so this guy out of the way. Don't need that anymore. So this comes pre-installed, this M-Factory LSD. Uh, it comes pre-installed with these three green um, what do you call them? Three green uh, Allen bolts here. And then it comes with a bag of these Allen bolts that are that have a uh, Loctite pre-installed. So these are temporary. These are temporary temporarily installed for shipping. Because once you get it. Oh Jesus. Those are really in there. just how tight those were. So no Loctite on these. Not sure. Super sketch. Alright, so there's a helical LSD. I guess I could clean this up first, but I don't think I will. Oh god, now I'll clean it. I didn't want to spray it with uh, the right way. There's only one way that goes in. So now I just got to get the bearings pressed on. I'm probably going to take it somewhere and have it done. And then, uh, what the hell do I do with those bearings anyways? But anyways, yeah, I'm probably going to take it somewhere, have the bearings pressed on. And then, um, be ready to throw the transmission back together. By throw, I mean very carefully. Reassemble it while listening. And place it back together very, very carefully while paying attention to... the uh, manufacturer's instructions. All 
All right, I think that'll do it for this video, or at least for now. Um, depends on whenever I get around to uploading. If I happen to get it back together before I feel like you know editing this and throw it up, then hey, it'll be one video. Um, but probably what I'll do is I'll break this into two different videos because it's probably going to be pretty long and pretty tedious. So uh, stay tuned for part two.